A few days ago, I ended up reinstalling Windows on this Gen 5 SSD from Seagate after doing a whole bunch of other major hardware changes to my PC build recently that included a new motherboard, a new CPU, a new graphics card, all that good stuff. Plus, it had just been quite a while since I had last reinstalled Windows, and quite frankly, I just had way too many programs installed and drivers that I no longer needed. So after Seagate sent over a 2TB model of their FireCuda 540 M.2 SSD, which we're actually doing a giveaway of, and you can find out more about that in the pinned comment or video description down below, I thought to myself, now is probably the best time to do a fresh install. So I installed the new SSD into the M.2 slot on my motherboard, which took no time at all. Very easy to install these drives nowadays, especially because you don't have to plug any extra cables in anywhere. It's just a very simple process to upgrade your PC and really speed it up by upgrading the storage of your system. Now there is a specific way I'd actually recommend you go about installing Windows 11 onto your bootable USB drive and that is by first downloading the actual ISO file which in my case the newest version of Windows is 23H2 which has just been released. It is apparently the last major update to this OS because next year apparently Windows 12 is going to come out which is pretty interesting but nevertheless you download the ISO file here and then using a free tool called Rufus that I'll also leave linked down below. You will select the ISO file you've downloaded and then hit start on your USB drive and it should give you this pop out saying customize Windows installation and here I'd recommend you probably remove the requirement for the RAM and everything else, remove the requirement for an online Microsoft account and also disable the data collection. This will basically just speed up the installation of Windows quite a bit for you and you won't have to fill out a questionnaire and whatever else. And you could even potentially install Windows 11 on a device that Microsoft thinks is incompatible but using this tool, you could make it compatible. So now once you get to the Windows setup page, you wanna select a different time and currency format to the one that Windows will give you by default. You want to choose English in brackets world because this will install a version of Windows that looks like this instead of one that looks like this when you would normally probably install Windows under United States or United Kingdom. When you choose world, it doesn't install all the bloatware and all the apps you probably never wanted to begin with. It saves time and it's such an important step that honestly everyone should do when installing Windows. So we've installed Windows and as you can see, things are looking pretty good here. The start menu is very clean, which is uh, the way you want it to be. Let's launch PowerShell as administrator and run this command here, which I'll leave linked down below in the description as well. This will launch a tool from Chris Titus Tech, who's got a YouTube channel as well. There we go, you should see this utility pop up on screen. Now what I'm gonna do is press on the desktop selection. I want to also enable the dark theme and I do not want to have Bing search in the start menu. I'm going to add a performance profile. I want to restore the classic right click menu. I want to remove OneDrive, remove Microsoft Edge, remove all Microsoft Store apps, disable mouse acceleration, and I'm gonna hit run tweaks. So I've restarted the PC and we are down to just 115 processes in the background. We're doing pretty good, but we still have about 31 apps installed. And I wanna see if we can drop that number even further. So we have an app here called Bloaty Nosy to sort of de-bloat Windows a whole lot more. So I'm gonna do all of these here. Explorer, show hidden files, yeah. Use dark theme, use dark theme, yeah, 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 yeah. Hide chat icon on taskbar, go. Apply fixes. And after doing another restart and a little bit more optimization, we are down to just 20 apps and you can drop this number down a whole lot further by pressing on the more apps section, then pressing below pilot. And here you can basically further uninstall a couple more programs. Say you don't want Microsoft Paint, you move it here, you press empty recycle bin, remove apps. And uh, next thing you know, if we refresh this page, apps, we are now down to 19. And I've also done a couple tweaks in the system configuration menu, which you can find by searching MS config and hitting enter, heading over to the services section. And then if you want to, you can sort of mess around here and disable a couple services that perhaps you might not need running in the background all the time to further reduce the process count within Windows. And personally, I would also recommend you adjust the performance options within Windows by typing in performance, pressing system. You can play around with this and sort of set it up the way you like it. But if you want to copy my settings, this is what I personally use on my own system. And it just makes Windows feel a little bit more snappy by 
disabling a few animations and just making things sort of happen more instantaneously and you spend less time waiting around like that. Another tip I suppose would be to make sure that the power plan that's been installed, the ultimate one, has actually been enabled by typing in power options and then selecting the ultimate performance power plan for your system. So that's most of the performance optimizations covered that I think most people should take the time to actually do on a fresh install of Windows or even their current installation of Windows could just be sped up ever so slightly by doing some of these tweaks using the apps I just showed you. But you could of course go even further and not have startup apps like Razer Synapse taking up God knows how many processes in the background but in my case, it is an app I actually use in conjunction with a whole bunch more apps that I have as startup applications on my proper install of Windows 11 that I'll show you now. So this is what my desktop currently looks like. It's very simple, very minimalistic. We have the date and time widgets in the center of the screen here. And you'll probably notice the fact that my taskbar is completely transparent and has been sort of blended into the background. Plus the system tray, I've tried to improve a lot by separating the icons for Wi-Fi. So when you press on your Wi-Fi icon, you actually get your Wi-Fi settings, as opposed to getting this menu popping up all the time. When you press on your Bluetooth icon, you actually get your Bluetooth settings. The same goes for the volume. I use an app called Ear Trumpet to override the normal volume mixer, which once again, <laughs> looks like this. Now in Windows, they have updated it to have this feature, but it's still like one extra click when really it should just be, you press on your volume and you get everything straight away. Then we have this icon here to adjust the brightness of your display, which is normally a feature you only find on laptops, but no, it turns out using this free app called Twinkle Tray, you can adjust the brightness of each one of your monitors either separately or as one. Then over to the left of those icons, I've got two temperature readouts, one for my CPU and one for my GPU. It's not something I have to be too concerned about on this system here because it is rather well cooled. However, if you're on a laptop, I would highly recommend you get this app for one main reason, and that's called battery bulging or battery swelling. You can search it up online yourself, but with lithium ion batteries, sometimes due to just their age and or the heat that the battery has gone through, it can sometimes cause the battery to sort of swell and bulge and expand causing you to potentially not be able to close your laptop lid anymore. It's something that is possibly preventable, maybe not entirely, but you can at least delay it from happening by sufficiently cooling your system to prevent very, very high temperatures all the time. If you see those temperatures are going well over 100 degrees Celsius all the time, maybe invest in like a laptop cooling pad or something to try and keep those down. You'll hopefully improve your frame rate and also the lifespan of your system. Which brings me onto another app that I've previously mentioned in a video called Power Toys. It's recently had an update that added a feature called Mouse Without Borders. And what I'm using right now is the mouse that's connected to my desktop PC but on my laptop. And in no way is this mouse actually paired to the laptop other than this app. And not only can we use the mouse that's plugged into my desktop to control the laptop, but we can also use the keyboard that's plugged into my PC to do things on the laptop with. And what's funny is that it actually works both ways and I can use my laptop trackpad to control my PC with. Same goes for the laptop keyboard. I can type in whatever I want. And I think one of the even crazier features is the fact that you can just drag and drop files between the two systems or just copy paste something on my desktop and just paste it right onto the laptop like how <laughs> that is the craziest app it's free it's almost mind-blowing the fact that this is even possible but yeah man maybe windows 11 isn't so bad after you do a whole bunch of tweaks like this the next app does a similar thing but instead of sharing a mouse and keyboard between your two devices that are on the same wi-fi network this one is called chrome remote desktop and i've had it installed on every installation of windows for at least the past five years because it allows your phone to control your pc from anywhere in the world. So as long as your PC is turned on and has Wi-Fi and your phone is turned on and has Wi-Fi, you can pretty much just connect to your laptop, to your PC, using your phone and do anything you like pretty much. You just use your phone as the mouse, you scroll around, you can control things. I could straight up edit my video using my phone if I really wanted to. You could even go as far as to launch games remotely using this app and play your desktop PC games on your iPhone on this app 
However, I'd probably avoid first-person shooter games like CSGO or the new Counter-Strike 2. Now, since I've installed the operating system on this fancy Fire Cuda 540 Gen 5 SSD that's claimed to hit 10 gigabytes per second read and write speeds, I'm gonna run a speed test of this drive while we talk about the next app called Modern Flyouts that replaces the normal Windows volume flyout that looks like this and it pops up on the bottom of your screen normally to look like the one up top, which in my opinion is way nicer. Plus it gives support for apps like Spotify or anything you're playing on Google Chrome at the time to pop up right here and basically give you multimedia controls right there, which is a neat feature. What's also worth mentioning in my opinion is whenever you press on NumLock, for example, or Caps Lock, a little notification pops up. The only downside is I don't think the app itself blocks the normal Windows audio flyout. So you do have to get another application called Hide Volume OSD to block the original audio pop out. Now at the start of the video, I did mention that I have this widget on my screen for date and time, and that's done using an app called B Widget, which is again, free to download, free to use, like pretty much every single app in today's video, apart from one. And you can use alternative apps like Rain Meter to basically do the exact same thing. This one is sort of just one Microsoft Store app, and it, it's okay, it's sort of very optional, you really don't have to have it, it's just kind of cool to have the time and date displayed as sort of a part of your wallpaper. I think the SSD has lived up to its claimed read and write speeds of 10 gigabytes per second, because uh, yeah, we seem to be doing pretty good in the speed test so far. The next modification I've done, I have also mentioned in a previous video once again, and it is called the Start All Back app, and it is the only paid app in today's video, and I'd say, it's worth trying. It is a very cheap app. I think it only costs maybe a couple dollars, but the free trial gives you 100 days to sort of experiment with an alternative start menu, which in my opinion is so simple, so easy to use. And one of the main reasons I like this app so much is the fact that it's very customizable, but it also separates your system tray icons into these individual ones. I'll show you guys the settings I've got set up on mine if you wanna copy the exact thing I've done but I've used this app in combination with another one called Translucent TB, which can be downloaded on the Microsoft Store, and it basically makes your taskbar transparent. It's not a necessary app to have because the Start All Back also does the same thing. However, it doesn't give you quite as much customization with the taskbar transparency as the Translucent TB app does. Another free app worth mentioning as well is called Rounded TB, and it gives you similar functions in a sense to the Start All Back app and actually works in conjunction with the Translucent TB app, but it's not something I've chosen to use myself because the Start All Back app more or less does a similar thing. Remember to enter the giveaway of the Seagate Fire Coda 540 2TB NVMe Gen 5 SSD that is actually backwards compatible with Gen 4 motherboards. So if you don't have the latest and greatest motherboard like myself, I had to use a PCIe Gen 5 expansion card in order to run this drive at its maximum speeds, but nevertheless, it is fully compatible with a PCIe Gen 4 slot, if that's something you're running right now. It is one fast drive that is guaranteed to speed up any system if you're coming from, say, a hard drive or a SATA SSD. Installing Windows, programs, games, everything on a drive like this will greatly increase the performance of your system not in terms of frame rates or anything, but in terms of the general feel and responsiveness of using your PC day to day. Loading games will be much faster, launching applications will take less time. Now with all that said, I've actually made another video showing seven more apps that I think everyone should be running on their Windows PC. 